Now we're going to be doing the majority of our synthesis using um, uh, uh, a structure within SuperCollider called the SynthDef, our synthesis definition. And uh, there's lots of different ways of generating sound in SuperCollider. At a certain point when you become good with it, it becomes a matter of taste. In this case, I like the structure of the SynthDef and I like its flexibility and especially for interactive type of um, projects that we'll be doing. It works really, really well. It's got a lot of power to its structure. So let's look at the SynthDef right now um, and uh, understand sort of basic usage, the concept of the SynthDef, and then understand also how synths are then used. So a SynthDef is a class. It's like that, or uh, you know, a, a method if you want. And all the methods, eugens, etc., have a scope there, the parentheses, okay? And that's basically you have your synth def. And within these parentheses now is going to go a definition of some kind of sound process that you want to make. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sound process, but generally speaking, at least for our purposes especially, we'll be doing all of our sound processes within the synth def. So what, what's a good analogy to use? Well, it's kind of like a, uh, a blueprint or a template. You can think of a synth def as sort of the template. So if you imagine yourself going into, say, the Yamaha factory or the Roland factory and going, you know, opening up a, a file cabinet and pulling out this schematic or this design for, you know, the X7 or one of the, the synths there, that's kind of what the synth def is. So it's not actually something that makes sound, but it's just a template or a blueprint or a map for a, a sound making process. Okay, so it's kind of like the blueprint for a synth. It's not the actual synth itself, but it's the blueprint for it. Um, and what happens is you create a synth def and then it gets added to the server. It gets sent there and so it's sitting there and you can use that blueprint whenever you want. And it has the synth def structure allows you to easily manipulate sounds in a kind of standardized way. All right. And the way you add it to your server is by d using this command dot add. So you're going to add your synth def. If you evaluate that, it's going to add a synth def to the server. Let's see if it'll do it for me. Oh, no, it won't. I, you, you need you need some other things uh, in there before it can do that. OK, so synth def. Now there's the sort of basic components for synth def. The first thing you're looking for is just the name of the synth def. And I'm going to use a slash notation for SuperGlider. That, that backward slash is, uh, just means that it's going to be a symbol. It just demarks a symbol. Uh, so let's call, this, um, uh, let's call this test. I'll just do that. OK, test. And then, so that's the first argument. Now you notice I put a comma, it's going to tell us all the arguments. So the first one we already got is the name. And it's looking for a UGen graph function, which don't worry about that term, kind of intimidating term. Uh, and then uh, various other things. Generally, at least in the beginning, we don't really deal with those these things at all. So it's really the name and the UGen graph function. Okay. So within SuperCollider, uh, a lot of the work is done in functions and to, to to distinguish a function, you put these two curly brackets. So everything in a curly brackets is generally what's known as a function. Uh, I won't get into it too much, but function is kind of like a, a little snippet of code that you can reuse. And it generally uh, tends to do something. You know, it's a function. It makes something or performs some kind of action. All right. And then it, oh, it, it itself has its own structure, but which we'll get into as well. All right. So let's see if that'll evaluate with an empty empty thing. Yeah, it will. So you can tell it's evaluated properly because you get this thing called asynth def. So I guess we, some mandatory arguments, maybe the function or the name that there's no defaults for. Okay, so that's your basic structure there. Uh, you have your synth def, your scope, two, two parentheses there, a name, and then the function. Now it's this function that's going to do all of our sound making processes. All right, and then we dot add, we add it to our server. So there you go. So right now on our server, there's a synth def named test. OK, and uh, it's again a blueprint. So you notice that when we evaluated this, no sound happened. And in fact, it's not a sound making device. It's just, a again, a template or a blueprint 
for eventually how we make sound. Now, uh, how to distinguish the synth def uh, is to then uh, use a synth. So how we actually play the synth def. So let me boot my server. Oh, it's already booted. So how I play the synth def, or how I actually create a synth is by, I should say, you can use the synth def to create a synth. So again, our analogy would be that you take this blueprint out of the file drawer and then you craft yourself a synthesizer, an actual DX7 or uh, you know some kind of synth. And in SuperCloud, it's quite easy. Um, you just use synth, the synth command there. And again, it has a scope there, right? And within that, you can see the arguments. The first thing is you want to create a synth. And often we call these synths instances. So they're individual instances of this synth definition. So it's like, you know, crafting a, uh, a DX7 model number one, and then you can make another synth model number two. Okay. And oftentimes you give a variable to the synth. So in super collider, uh, single letters without anything else are automatically global variables. Okay. So we'll just use a in this case, if you want to create a global variable, uh, a man, uh, custom one, you can use this tilde and you can use as many characters as you want. S1, for example. Okay. So we're going to make a synth and it's going to be based on the synth definition test. Okay. So there you go. So again, this thing is the blueprint. This thing is an actual synth, as an instance. So this will be the sound making one. We don't have anything here to make sound yet. But if you see that if I engage that, it says it's created a synth test. So the nice thing about this sort of this type of structure is you can create as many synths as you want. So as many DX7s, for example, you can have a whole warehouse full of them based on the same synth definition. So once you create sort of a flexible process there, then you can create a bunch of different ones. It's like a mold. Okay, so now I have another one, and let's see, it's at the node 1001. Uh, you don't worry about the nodes right now. You can just see that there's two of them now, 1000 and 1001. All right, and then there's sort of a syntax to deal with synths. So one of those, and I'll go over this stuff again, is you can kill them or free them. Okay, so I can kill that synth, and that's gotten rid of the S1, and I can do the same with S2. And there's a number of other things you can do. The main things we'll be interested in is free and then um, set, but we'll get to set later. Okay, well, uh, that was kind of dry and pedantic. Uh, yeah, we're just sort of typing words and doing things, but nothing's happening yet. So let's go ahead and make a synth def here that will actually make some sound, okay? So I'm gonna open up my, just my, uh, just the, the visual and just do some hard returns. So generally, that's how I, I create my synth def. I'll have uh, just I just want to put it on the same line so you see how it is. But I have my parentheses here dot add, and then because everything's happening within a function, we're going to put the function there. Okay. So let me introduce you to one Eugen, which is called out, and that's. Uh, basically the Eugen that sends things out to the speakers or out to our sound card. All right, so we're gonna use out, and all Eugens start with a capital letter, that's helpful. And then it's gonna be audio rate, because we're sending audio out, okay? So again, and then our scope like that. So out.ar, or the Eugen out, will basically send sound out to our sound card, to our speakers. Or you can also go to private audio buses, but uh, we won't deal with that right now. So it asks for two arguments. It asks for a bus, which is the audio channel you want to send it out. So generally speaking, if you have a stereo, you know, if you're just going out your basic stereo output, zero is your left channel and bus number one is your right channel. If you happen to have a sound card that has multi channels, it just numbers up from there. So zero is channel one, one is channel two, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got eight channel sound card first channel zero up to channel seven. 
All right, so we're just going to send it out our left speaker, zero, just a mono signal. And then the channels array it's looking for really is just a fancy way of saying what actual sound are you sending out. Okay, so uh, we're going to create a sine wave and send that out. Sinos.ar, another UGen. And if we just do sinos.ar and then the, the two parentheses, it's going to use the defaults. Okay, so that's in this case it's it, it's marked here. It's going to use a frequency of 440, phase of zero multiplier, and zero, one, and zero. Okay, so we'll just do that. We'll use our default sine wave. We're using or sending it out channel zero or the left channel. All right, so uh, again, every time you evaluate this synth def, it's going to add, it's going to replace the last one. So the last time I did test, it was an empty function. This time I'm going to replace that test one now with a more functional thing that has a sine wave in it. All right, so let's do that. And then this time if I, if I, so you notice no sound happened. Uh, again, it's just a blueprint, but if I use that blueprint to create an actual synth, it's going to make this sine wave play. All right. And this is where the free comes in handy. If you want to cut that out, we can free it. Okay, without, you can use command period, but that sort of kills all the sound, sound processes. So, there you go. That's the basic, you know, sound making function. You have your synth def and you have synths. Okay, and I guess the important thing here is to realize that that is just a blueprint and these are instances so you can stamp out like a rubber stamp as many synths as you want. I can create a hundred of them based on the same thing. I'll basically have a hundred sine waves that go 440. So that's not so interesting, but the idea is there that you can create a number of as many synths as you want as your computer can handle based on the one definition. Okay, so let's look at uh, another, a couple other really important things that that makes this type of this type of uh, relationship or structure really useful, the syntax really, really useful, the synth death synth uh, kind of a metaphor here in SuperCollider. So one of the things is arguments. So arguments are variables which you can set, uh, that you can set from the outside, that you can set on the fly, okay? So if, and, and they, in the synth death structure, they have to go on the first line. So if I try to put arg down somewhere like after this, it'll throw an error. Okay, so they have to be the first line. And um, arguments, um, again, I'll give you an example, can be set from the, the outside, and they're used within the synth def. So I'm going to create an argument called freak, okay? And then I'm going to put that argument freak, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push it through. It's going to be passed on to my ugen. Okay, so what happens with an argument is it's set uh, it's set, it can be set on the fly for the outside, so it goes through here, and then it gets passed here to the freak. So everywhere I use that in within my set, synth def will be whatever I pass it, pass it. Okay. So let's see, and then also it's a good idea when you when you declare an uh, argument to give it a default. So we're just going to make it, uh, we'll make it 300. Okay, that's my default frequency. Okay. So now if I evaluate that. And if I start a synth, you'll notice that it is uh, a little bit lower in pitch because it's just 300, okay? And then that brings me to uh, using the set, okay? So uh, let me let me just uh, stop that for a second. So another important concept is is that you have your synth def and you have these individual instances running, okay? So now, th and this is the way this variable works. Now S1 represents, or is a, the placeholder now, for this synth okay, test. And since I didn't add any arguments there, it's going to be the default 300, 300 hertz synth. All right? So now I'm going to do everything to S1, because that's sort of the placeholder. This is represents the actual synth. Okay? And so one of, one of the commands I can use is s1.set. Okay, so uh, it's probably important to mention that before I, I evaluate this line, synth test, s1 doesn't exist. It just, there's no synth there. 
you know, uh, there's no DX7 sitting in front of me. Once I evaluate that, poof, the DX7 appears. It's a synth that exists. Once I free it here, it's gone away again. It doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so this S1 set really can only be used when uh, the synth exists. The S1 is actually a synth. So for example, if I do that, and then, okay, so, uh, sorry, so let's very quickly, well, uh, let me tell you what synth set does, and then I'll, I'll explain the rest of it to you. Uh, so set basically can set any of these arguments. That's how you change these arguments on the fly. And it, the syntax is it requires the name of the argument you want to set with a backslash, so the symbol notation. So I'm going to change the freak argument, okay? And I'm going to give it another value, and then the value you want to change it to. So in this case, 100 hertz. And just try to remember, this is looking for hertz or cycles per second, you know, so it's, it's different from, uh, say, MIDI notes, that sort of thing, but we'll get into that later. Right, so I'm going to set my frequency to 100. So if I go to create a synth and I set it to 100, it goes down, right? And then I free it. Now you'll notice that I freed it, so it doesn't exist anymore. So if I try to set it, if I try to set the argument, it's going to say, uh, error, failure in server, the node is not found. So, so S1 is no longer the synth, so I can't set a synth that doesn't exist because free just completely got rid of it. Okay? So, um, so basically, that's a very powerful thing. You can you can set something in motion, and then change it in real time on the fly. And you can imagine more complicated synth defs that have loads and loads of arguments. Uh, these are these are akin to the basically, if you think of a synth and all the knobs and dials, changing the filter frequencies or changing the attack or changing all these things. You can create as many nodes and knobs and dials and, and buttons as you wish uh, in your synth def. And we'll go through, basically explore a number of those possibilities through recipes, through different ways of doing the synth. But as long as we understand that this is our basic structure. You have arguments, you have this, and then you have out. Now one last thing I want to, or one other thing I want to introduce to you is the variables. Variables, arguments are a form of variable, but they are a special type of variable that you can set on the fly for the outside. The variables called var are only usable within the code here. And they're just kind of tidying up or housekeeping things. If you have something that you're going to reuse a lot of times in a complex bit of code, you often use a variable or to keep things very clear and organized. But they are not settable from the outside. So if I use a set command on a variable, it won't recognize that variable. Okay. So for example, just to keep things tidy, I'm going to create a variable called synth. And then I'm going to move my sign oscillator to the synth variable. So I'm going to say synth equals, and then I'm just going to cut this stuff here. So now it's just a variable, the way variables work. This variable synth is equal to the sign oscillator. All right. So in case I wanted to reuse that sign oscillator, or do other things to it, or just to, again to keep it tidy. And now I still have to send something out, but I'm going to send this variable synth. Ouch. Which which is exactly the same thing as I had before, except now the synth represents this sine oscillator. Okay. So just to introduce you to this concept of variables, most of the synth defs that I'll be showing you will have the argument and the variables, and do various things. All right. Uh, so yeah. So you have that, and then you, it's just still the same thing. Change the frequency, and then we free it. OK, so you can set things on the fly after you've created the instance. OK, so if you, if you want something to set, again, if I try to do it, it's going to throw an error because it doesn't exist. You have to create it first and then set it. Now, what if you are creating it, and you don't want the very first thing you hear to be this 300? Well, you can also set the arguments at the moment of creation as well. All right. So in order to do that, you have another section here, arguments. If I put a comma, it actually brings up this menu, this yellow reminder. And the next thing it looks for is args. Okay. And in the synth syntax, it's looking for uh, the arguments in 
uh, an array or the square bracket notation. Okay, we'll we'll deal with what arrays are later, but if we, we use the square bracket notation, and it's looking for a an order of an order of things. So basically, it's looking for the name of the argument, and then it's looking for the value of the argument. In this case, we'll make it uh, 700. Okay. And then, of course, if you had more, we only have one argument, but if you had more than one, we would do like amp 0 0.5 and whatever, attack 0 0.11, things like that. So it's looking for argument name, value, argument name, value. Okay, But in this case, we just have the one argument. So again, this bracket notation, this, this version right here, is for if you want to set your arguments as you're as you're creating the synth okay so the first thing that comes out has these arguments in place okay so there you go but that doesn't mean you still can't set it after the fact too so I can still set it again there All right and then free it okay so I think that's uh, gonna do it for the synth and synth dev thing this is a pretty important concept right? that's why I went over it in some kind of detail uh, we'll be doing it over and over again to create these things. Like I said, this is going to be the, the basic, the basic um, template for the way we create all of our synthesis. And these, these can, be, can grow quite um, complex, but also they're quite flexible in using this synth def and synth situation. Oh, before I go, actually, I did want to just show you one more thing, and that is just to drive home this idea of several of different instances based on the same template. So if I want to create another instance here, and then at the moment of creation, create a different frequency. <coughs> so let's do something, let's do something 200, let's do 600, I think. And then let's make a third one. And then we'll make that S3. So I'm changing the variable name, that's kind of important. And I guess 600, 800, one, maybe 1,000, something like that. Okay, so if I create a synth uh, 200, then I can, based on the same template, <coughs> I can create another synth. And then I can create yet another synth. Okay, and then, so there are totally separate instances and I can set them like that and I can free them independently. So even though these are using the same synth def, they're independent entities. Uh, you know, I, I, I like this, I like this sort of metaphor of that you're actually creating whole synths because these can be complicated so it's like having you know three dx7s but in this case it's a fairly simple one so it's like hitting a different key three keys like a poly um uh you know poly harmony there okay well let's let's wrap that up there uh synth def synths it's pretty important uh, hopefully that, that is pretty clear presentation of that if not uh, go over the video again or you know just as we build more and more synth tests it should become pretty much second nature.